Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophesied in the Bible and other scriptures. God appoints a messenger to carry his message to the people. The message that the messenger brings is known as revelation, the divinely inspired words of God. God's revelation consists of information about God and his attributes, including his guidelines, teachings, miracles, stores of past prophets, nations, lessons, and more. God's revelation also includes prophecies of future events that will happen before Judgment Day, occurring as signs for us to know that Judgment Day is near and that the revelation came from God. Some revelation includes prophecies of new prophets yet to come. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied in the scriptures of most, if not all, major world religions, including the Old Testament and the New Testament. Before the arrival of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Jews and Christians of Arabia were awaiting an unlettered prophet to revive Prophet Abraham's, peace be upon him, religion. Early records of Jews and Christians, from rabbis to monks, witnessed and recognized that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, represented the fulfillment of a prophecy stated in their book. And when there came to them a book from Allah, which confirms what was with them, while earlier they used to seek help against those who disbelieved, yet when there came to them that which they did recognize, they denied it. So the curse of Allah is upon the disbelievers. Quran chapter 2 verse 89 The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied in the Old Testament in several passages. God, the Almighty, speaks to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. This verse states that God will send down another prophet similar to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Who is this prophet to which this verse is referring? Christians mistakenly believe that this prophecy refers to Jesus Christ because of his similarity to the prophet Moses, peace be upon him. They were both Jews and prophets. However, if one looks at only these two criteria, then all of the prophets of the Bible who came after the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, such as prophet Isaiah, Daniel, Joel, etc., would fulfill this prophecy since they reigned as both Jews and prophets. In actuality, this verse references Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who came after Prophet Moses and Prophet Jesus, peace be upon them. As the verse states, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, because both had fathers and mothers. Of course, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, had no father. According to the Bible, both prophets were married and had children. Whereas Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did not marry nor have offspring. Both Prophet Muhammad and Moses, peace be upon them, died natural deaths. Whereas Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was raised to the heavens by God. Both Prophet Muhammad and Moses, peace be upon them, were accepted as prophets by their people in their lifetimes. While Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was rejected and not accepted by his people. Both Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, were statesmen who governed their people, wielding power to inflict capital punishment. They were political and military leaders, whereas Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was not. Both Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, came with new laws and regulations for their people while Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did not come with a new law. He came only to confirm and renew the law of the previous prophet, Moses, peace be upon him, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Both Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, began their prophethood at the age of 40, while Jesus Christ initiated his at 30. 
There are only a few similarities between Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, but they have a lot more in common than Prophet Jesus and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them. The same verse also states that the prophet shall be among their brethren to come. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10 says the awaited prophet will not be a Jew of ethnic origin and will come from outside of Israel. There has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses. The Lord knew Moses face to face. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10. This edict eliminates Jesus Christ as the prophet since he was a Jew. We learn that the prophet to come is neither from the children of Israel nor from among them. Instead, he originates from their brethren. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is from among the brethren of the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, because Arabs are brethren of Jews. Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, had two sons. Ishmael and Isaac, peace be upon them. Arabs are the descendants of Prophet Ishmael, and Jews are the descendants of the Prophet Isaac. The Prophet to come is no other than Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The verse says that God will put his words in this Prophet's mouth, meaning the one listening would repeat precisely as he hears from the one speaking. Since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a prophet of God, he would receive revelation, words of God, through the angel Gabriel, and repeat the words verbatim to the people, just as the verse states. For instance, God states in the Holy Quran, I am your Lord, so worship me. Quran chapter 21 verse 92. The Holy Quran's words are God's words verbatim that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, transmitted to the people as prophesied in the Bible. These are the exact words that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received and repeated from Angel Gabriel, who had received them from God. Never did Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, claim he was God. The book of Isaiah states that the book shall be given to a prophet. Then the book is delivered to one who is illiterate, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I am not literate. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12. When the angel Gabriel came down to deliver the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, angel Gabriel commanded him to recite it, to which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, responded that he was illiterate as the Bible prophesied. This story is very well known in the Islamic tradition. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also mentioned by name in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in Hebrew. The Hebrew word used is Muhammadim. In Hebrew, the suffix I am that marks the end is added as a term of respect. Without the I am suffix, the name would be Muhammad. If you were to pick up the Old Testament today in the English language, you would notice that the Bible has replaced the name Muhammad, which is translated in the Hebrew Bible as altogether lovely, even though the book has no right to translate the name of a person. The verse should have retained the name Muhammad instead of translating it in the Hebrew Bible. Jesus Christ stated in the Gospel of John that God commanded him to leave and that God would bring down a comforter who would come with mercy. Jesus Christ expected someone else to come after him to continue his unfinished mission of spreading the one true God's worship and abolishing the worship of all other false deities. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also prophesied in the New Testament. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, had the whole truth. However, God did not find it fit for humanity to receive the entire message of Islam then. They would not have been able to grasp and bear the whole message. According to the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 14, Jesus Christ stated, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now them bear. The verse quotes Jesus Christ as saying, more than you can now them bear. Then Jesus Christ says, But when he, 
the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 14. This Spirit of Truth is none other than God's last and final messenger of humanity, meant to be followed until the last day. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came after Jesus Christ, preaching the same general message as Prophet Jesus and every other messenger and prophet before him. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, referred to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the Spirit of Truth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known as the Truthful, the Trustworthy, by his people in Arabia before becoming a prophet of God. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, told his people that many things would be needed to be told, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came down with additional laws and concepts to be introduced to the people. The verse states that this coming advocate would glorify me and testify of me, which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did. Not only does the Holy Quran honor the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and mention him 25 times, but it also honors his mother and calls Mary, peace be upon her, the holiest and greatest of all women that ever lived. It has a chapter named after and dedicated to her. This verse was not referencing the coming of the Holy Spirit as Christians are taught. According to Christians, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. How can this verse be referring to the Holy Spirit if it states, He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears. How can one who is supposed to be divine, part of God and part of the Trinity, not speak of his own volition, but only speak what he hears? Moreover, how can the Holy Spirit, who is supposedly God or part of God, need to receive revelation from someone else? God did not need to wait to receive revelation. He gives it himself. Since this advocate needs to wait for a higher being to provide him with revelation, it shows a deficiency, indicating that he cannot be God nor part of God. The verse implies that the one who is to come is dependent on God and is a servant of God. He would not be God or part of God. The verse stated, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, implying the advocate has not come yet. How can this verse reference the Holy Spirit as the advocate if the Holy Spirit was with them already? The verse states that the Comforter would come only after the departure of Jesus Christ. It implies that this advocate has yet to come. The person that Jesus Christ prophesied was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was the Paraclete, the Comforter, the Helper, and the Admonisher sent by God after the Prophet Jesus Christ. This is clear proof for those who are not stubborn and arrogant and those that ponder and reflect instead of just believing what their church preaches. O oh, our people, respond to the Messenger of Allah and believe in Him. Allah will forgive for you your sins and protect you from a painful punishment. Quran, chapter 46, verse 31. The Bible references the coming of another prophet after Jesus Christ in several passages. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 references Jesus Christ as the original paraclete. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we will have an advocate, paraclete, with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Then, Jesus Christ prophesied the coming of another paraclete after him. However, depending on which Bible you reference, the word paraclete was translated into different words in this verse. Some Bibles reference it as comforter, advocate, counselor, Holy Spirit, helper, etc. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to help you and be with you forever. John chapter 14, verse 16. Who is this other comforter that God will send? 
it cannot be the Holy Spirit, as some Christians have mistakenly understood it, because the verse says another comforter, which would imply there is more than one Holy Spirit. How many Holy Spirits do Christians believe there exist? Another verse states, When the Comforter comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. John chapter 15, verse 26. In another verse, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. John chapter 16, verse 7. Some Bibles use the word advocate, and some use the word comforter. An advocate is a person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an advocate for Jesus Christ as they preached the same message. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied in the Hindu scriptures. The Vedas contain many. He is also prophesied in Buddhist scriptures. The prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that Jesus Christ foretold his people about the upcoming prophet, is shared in the Holy Quran. Jesus, son of Mary, said, Children of Israel, I am sent to you by God, confirming the Torah that came before me, and bringing good news of a messenger to follow me, whose name will be Ahmad. Yet when he came to them with clear signs, they said, This is obviously sorcery. Quran, chapter 61, verse 6. Muhammad and Ahmad's names are synonyms. They come from the same root meaning, the praised one. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stated in a hadith, I am Muhammad and Ahmad. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet they find described in the Torah that is with them and in the gospel, who commands them to do right and forbids them to do wrong, who makes things lawful to them and bad things unlawful, and relieves them of their burdens and the iron collars that were on them, so it is those who believe him, honor and help him, and who follow the light which has been sent down with him who will succeed. Quran, chapter 7, verse 157.